In the 1970s, the Soviet Union embarked on an audacious project that was unrivaled in its ambition, constructing a surface warfare vessel that could measure up to the mighty battleships of the world wars, a feat abandoned by navies worldwide due to crippling costs and glaring vulnerabilities the Soviets dared to dream of a ship that would dwarf all others, a leviathan stretching over 250 meters in length and with a full load displacement of 24,300 tons. It would be nearly double the size of any American competitor. Undeterred by changes in global naval strategy, the Soviets defiantly forged ahead, bringing to life their colossal ships that were not only nuclear-powered, but also equipped with an arsenal of formidable weaponry. These included 20 P-700 Granite anti-ship missiles and 96 S-300F Fort long-range surface-to-air missiles, making them a dangerous adversary for any naval force. Their nuclear reactors gave them an essentially unlimited range, allowing them to project power across the globe. These maritime behemoths were so menacing at their debut that they stirred the U.S. Navy's slumbering giants, resurrecting an old American fleet that was considered all but extinct. Originally designed to threaten the U.S. Navy's crown jewels, the irreplaceable aircraft carriers and ballistic missile submarines, these surviving Soviet titans have since transitioned into new roles, proudly flying the Russian flag. One Russian military expert lays bare their potential. As the only remaining battlecruisers from Russia's naval arsenal, the Kirov-class warships not only stand as an imposing testament to the country's naval prowess, but are also poised for a significant service life that stretches far into the future. The saga of the Kirov-class battlecruisers is not just a tale of Russian naval might, but also a testament to their impact on global naval strategy. It was a threat so sudden and immense at its inception that it led to the emergency reactivation of the U.S. Navy's remaining battleships. Soviet Leviathan In the 1970s, the tension between the superpowers was reflected not just in politics, but also in the water. The Soviet Union embarked on a mission to challenge the naval supremacy of its greatest adversary, the United States. As such, despite being well past the end of the Golden Age of warships, the Soviet Union set its sights on a new project, Project 1144 Orlan, the Kirov class, the largest and heaviest surface combatant warships in operation in the world, was only second in size to large aircraft carriers and similar to a World War I era battleship. While Western defense refers to these ships as battle cruisers, the official Soviet classification for the type is a heavy nuclear-powered guided missile cruiser. At 28,000 tons and an overall length of 827 feet, these ships are comparable in size to Japan's Izumo-class aircraft carriers, and well over three times the size of the Arleigh Burke-class destroyers that today form the backbone of the United States Navy. Launched in 1977 and officially commissioned in 1990, the lead ship and namesake of the class, Kirov, was named after Sergei Kirov, a prominent early Bolshevik leader. Original Soviet plans called for the construction of five ships, all named after early 20th century revolution heroes. However, only three more ships were built, Frunze, Kalinin, and Yuri Andropov, laid down in 1986 and launched three years later. Expected Role Had the Cold War turned hot, these unique battlecruisers would have played a significant role in Soviet naval strategy designed to intimidate and assert dominance on the high seas. Initially planned to find and engage enemy missile submarines, the class became a much more capable warship after being equipped with the long-range P-700 Granite anti-ship missiles. With this, the Kirovs could threaten Western carrier battle groups, particularly of the United States Navy, while also carrying out an anti-submarine role. The Soviet battlecruisers also served another strategic purpose, power projection, using an unusual combination of both nuclear and steam propulsion to generate a top speed of 30 knots, with the dual system providing a backup in case of technical failures. With this, the world's only nuclear-powered surface combatants have significant advantages in terms of endurance, allowing them to remain at sea for months if required, if resupplied by air. They can also cruise at full speed for significantly longer than other cruiser or destroyer classes. On paper, the Kirov class was the ideal platform, forming the core of task forces that could influence political developments worldwide. The Soviet Navy planned the Kirovs to operate in tandem with a new class of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers that ultimately never came to be. Back to life. Such a powerful combatant did not go unnoticed by the West, 
and their arrival on the world stage was seen as a significant shift in naval power dynamics. The Kirov class showed that the Soviet surface fleet posed a serious threat to United States carrier battlegroups. In the 1980s, Secretary of the Navy John F. Lehman Jr. of the Reagan administration proposed that the Iowa class ships be reactivated. The plan aimed to counter the Soviet Union's expansion of its navy, with the Kirov class being seen as a particular threat. The belief was that by bringing the Iowas back into service, the U.S. could provide a credible counter to the Kirovs. Unsurprisingly, the reactivation suggestion triggered a heated debate, given the cost and the fact that the ships were seen as somewhat outdated. Although the vessels differed dramatically in capability, configuration, and technology, they were large vessels. The Navy imagined several new ways of packing updated systems onto their massive hulls that would turn them into formidable, multi-purpose ships. Eventually, the U.S. Navy recommissioned four of these ships, Iowa, New Jersey, Missouri, and Wisconsin. The models received significant upgrades to their weapons and electronic systems, including the addition of Tomahawk cruise missiles and Harpoon anti-ship missiles. One thing they kept from their old configuration was that they retained their main battery of nine 16-inch guns, which could deliver awe-inspiring firepower. These ships' presence served as a counterbalance to the Soviet Union's Kirov-class battlecruisers. Not to be. Yet the Kirov's reign was as impressive as it was short-lived. As such an impressive yet costly vessel class, the Kirov battlecruisers were expensive to build and maintain, especially for a Soviet economy that was already strained. Some critics have suggested that the Kirovs, along with other expensive military projects, contributed to the financial crises that ultimately led to the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. As such, the class never actively participated in a Soviet combat situation. And after the collapse of the Soviet Union, all four existing and incomplete Kirovs were given new names and would see different fates. Following a reactor accident in 1990 during her second deployment, Kirov was never repaired again. After being placed in reserve, she was renamed Admiral Ushakov. Frunza, now named Admiral Lazarev, and Kalinin, now Admiral Nakimov, were put in storage to await their fates. However, Yuri Andropov, the last Kirov vessel to be constructed, was renamed Pyotr Veliki, Peter the Great in English, and since the fall of the USSR, has remained operational with the Russian Navy, today serving as the flagship of Russia's northern fleet. In 2008, Peter the Great was part of a naval task group that sailed to the Caribbean Sea to conduct exercises with the Venezuelan Navy. Arriving on November 25, 2008, coinciding with a visit by Russian President Dmitry Medvedev, the task force conducted a combined exercise known as Venrus 200 with the Venezuelan Navy that December. This exercise was seen as a significant show of force, as it marked the first time since the end of the Cold War that Russia had sent such a strong naval force into the Western Hemisphere. Whispers of a Comeback Over the years, there have been persistent rumors regarding the return of the three other Kirovs to service, with the first two ships decommissioned shortly after the Soviet Union disintegrated and deteriorating badly in storage. It was expected that the already-in-service Pyotr Veliki and her sister ship, Admiral Nakimov, would be modernized with 21st century sensors, electronics, and weaponry, as an attempt to double its active fleet of giant nuclear-powered battlecruisers from one to two. But for over a decade now, the process has not been going well. The main problem with this modernization is the nuclear-powered engines, which use enriched uranium. Today, Russian industry lacks the capacity and expertise to produce reliable gas turbine engines for large ships. This means the workers must make do with the older machinery, particularly the engines already aboard the old Kirovs, which is almost 50 years old. This is why Russia has only been able to maintain one cruiser, Peter Veliki, since the late 1990s. For years, the date has been pushed back further and further, adding to the confusion. Still one. Finally, in 2023, a Russian Navy source has seemingly confirmed that plans to modernize the Kirov-class nuclear-powered battlecruiser Pyotr Veliki have been cancelled, with the ship instead set to be decommissioned. Instead, Admiral Nakimov is the only ship of her class set to complete its refurbishment and return to service sometime in the mid-2020s. Pyotr Veliki, expected to enter a similar refurbishment at that time, will instead be decommissioned when Admiral Nakimov returns to service, again leaving the Russian Navy with just one Kirov-class ship. There seem to be a number of factors to this decision, like the nuclear-powered ship's high operational costs 
and a refocusing of budgets toward other areas of the armed forces due to the changing geopolitical realities and necessities that Russia has faced in the last few years. Further cuts to the fleet of Kirov-class battlecruisers come as part of a long line of cuts to Russia's ocean-going surface fleet. In fact, the country has not laid down a single destroyer or cruiser-sized ship since the Soviet era, and the Navy has steadily reduced numbers in favor of a brown and green water fleet consisting of smaller frigates and corvettes. Significant advances in missile capabilities, like the development of the Zircon hypersonic cruise missile and the surface-to-surface -surface variants of the Calibre missile, allow ships to engage targets from large distances without moving far from Russian coasts. Still, the exact cause for the decision to cut the fleet of Kirov-class cruisers remains uncertain. Fit for the future Speaking about the capabilities of modernized Kirov-class battlecruisers, Andrei Dyachkov, the CEO of the Severnoye Design Bureau, claimed in April 2021 that, quote, the high modernization potential integrated into these ships upon their designing helped carry out certain works and outfit the Admiral Nikimov with the most advanced weapons, which makes it the world's strongest surface combat ship. In addition to new sensors and electronics, the Nikimov will integrate a naval variant of the S-400 air defense system with a nearly 250-mile engagement range with 96 cells allocated to its surface-to-air missiles, more or less equivalent to the firepower of three full battalions of the land-based version of those systems. This will be supplemented by a naval variant of the S-350 medium-range air defense system. Its 20 launch cells for massive P-700 Granit cruise missiles will be replaced by 80 launch cells for P-800, Kalibir, and Zircon cruise missiles for a total of 176 launch cells for large missiles. These new capabilities will provide the cruiser class with the greatest firepower of any surface combatant in the world. If the specifications didn't say much to you, the Kirov class has the most vertical launching system cells of any battleship, as it has an impressive capacity of a total of 352. Meanwhile, the Arleigh Burke class of the United States Navy has 122 cells, while the Chinese Type 055 destroyers have 112 VLS cells. Unsinkable Legacy Today, Pyotr Veliki, the last of the four ships, remains in active service, unlike some other remnants of the Soviet period. The Russian Navy has used Pyotr Veliki to fly the Russian flag around the world, reminding everyone of the active relevance of their fleet. For a time, she even conducted anti-piracy operations off Somalia in one of the most puzzling matches between mission and capability in recent history. When finished, the lone remaining Kirov-class battlecruiser, Admiral Nikimov, will be deployed under the Northern Fleet, echoing the Russian Navy's prioritization of the Arctic region as it emerges as both a key trade route as well as a center for geopolitical competition with the Western Bloc. After sailing for decades, bearing as a witness to the ever-changing laws of warfare, the ship remains one of the most dangerous and lethal battleships ever created. The Kirov-class ships have been and still are crucial for Russia's maritime power. They can both pose a threat to United States assets and showcase Russia's maritime strength with their impressive and prestigious presence. With their outstandingly heavy armament, even as the geopolitical landscape shifts, the Kirov class continues to be a threat to all major powers around the globe. As the Kirov class awaits its rebirth with the modernized Admiral Nikimov, it is not inconceivable to think that this resurgence might stimulate a response from the United States Navy, potentially bringing back to life another previously decommissioned vessel, just like the Iowa class in the 1980s. Thanks for diving deep with Dark Seas. Don't forget to submerge that like button and leave your thoughts in the comments below. For more explorations into the world's darkest mysteries, subscribe to Dark Seas and all the Dark Documentaries channels. Stay tuned.